Hey guys and welcome to my channel. Ali Reza here and in this video I'll cover how to make a simple door which can be opened and closed by pressing a button on your keyboard. This is a part of a project in which I tried to recreate a game called Inside and in this part of the level I wanted to have a door so by closing it on the enemy AI the player can get rid of him. It's going to be a very simple setup so let's jump right in and get started. Let's create a blueprint in the content browser, select actor, name it door and open it up. The first thing I need is an object as my door so here let's add a static mesh and then in the details tab let's choose the door asset. You can just go with a simple box and by scaling it make it look like a door. An important thing here is that the pivot point of the mesh should be on its side so it can rotate around it properly. If the pivot point is at the center of the object, it will rotate around the center of the door which is not what we want. In case you want to know how to change the pivot point of your objects, you can watch this tutorial here in which I completely cover the topic. Alright, now what we want to do is to add a box collision. This is the area that when the character steps in, he can press keys on the keyboard and interact with the door. And when he is outside this area, he won't be able to give input to the blueprint. Okay, now let's drag the blueprint into the level and place it in the door frame. Here is the button and this is where I want the character to be able to give input to the blueprint. So let's adjust the box collision and put it around this button here. Alright now let's go to the event graph and make the code for the door rotation. First we want to enable input when the character is in the box. So right click on the box collision and hit on component begin overlap. We want to disable input when he is outside the box, so do it again and this time add on component and overlap to the event graph. Here let's enable input when he goes into the box and then disable input when he steps out of the box. For the controller, add get player controller to both nodes and now we are ready to go. Okay, now we are going to define a key on the keyboard to do the interaction with. Right click, type keyboard and choose a key and then here you can change it to whatever you like. Let's go with E and now when I press E on the keyboard, I am giving input to the blueprint and whatever we make here will be triggered. We want set relative rotation to change the rotation of the door. Connect the static mesh to the target pin and then let's make a 90 degree rotation around the Z axis. Let's compile, play the game and as you can see when I hit E on the keyboard, the door will rotate 90 degrees and get closed. In order to make it move smoothly like a natural door, we need a timeline. You can add it to the event graph by right clicking and typing timeline. What it does is that it outputs the values based on the timeline so the amount of rotation will take place incrementally and as a result the door will rotate smoothly. Let's open it up and here add a flow track. This is the length of the timeline and in our case one second is enough but obviously if you want the door to move faster or slower you can play with these values here to achieve the result you are looking for. Now let's right click here and add a point and also add another one at the end of the line. We want to give a 90 degree rotation in one second so the first point's time and value should be 0 and 0 and the second one should be 1 and 90. Then hit these icons here to frame the points and the final thing we want to do here is to select them both and hit auto to make this curve. This curve means that the speed of the door will be decreased at the start and the end of the movement which makes it look more natural. Okay, let's go back to the event graph and connect the timeline to the set relative rotation function. Here we should connect the track we made to the rotation input, but since they have different formats, they are not compatible. What we need here is a make rotator to translate the float value into a rotation value and now we are able to connect it to the function. We also want the rotation to be around the z-axis, so connect them this way and now we are ready to go. Thank you. 
Now you can see that it's moving smoothly and everything is working perfectly. If you want to be able to open the door again, all you need is a flip-flop node here and then you need to connect the B output to the reverse pin in the timeline. It means that when you press E for the first time, it will play the timeline as we discussed and when you press E again, it will play it backwards so the door will rotate in reverse. As you can see, it's working perfectly and that's how you can make a simple door mechanism using blueprints. By the way, if you're interested in knowing more about the other parts of this project, you can watch my other videos about different topics, including the lighting setup and the enemy blueprints. Thank you guys for watching and if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to leave a comment and subscribe to the channel. See you in the next one.